Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Bierman, your guide to demystifying your world. Today's guest, Lexis Johnson, will sweep you into a world where you've never been. Before jumping in, I have a favor to ask. Would you please subscribe to the show, rate and review it, and it's really easy to do it either in your podcast player or on the show website, and the link for that will be in the show notes. And also, if you could please share this podcast with two of your friends, that would be really super to help get the word out there, because so many people are trying to figure out, how come my world looks like this? What's happening? I have a quick question for you. Do you feel stuck? Well, your world looks the same day after day after day. Why is that happening? You know what you know. You know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know. And that's what's keeping you stuck. And you can get a jump on that by reaching a step in a new direction. And that is a short read, and the link for that will be in the show notes. The, the alchemical process Lexus teaches provides a roadmap and blueprint your soul came here to experience. It's your choice to go through life in the dark, guessing which path to take, or learn your soul's intended destiny and take the direct route. You are intended to live in love, joy, abundance, and blessings. She's a registered master of over two dozen various energy healing modalities. And frankly, I know lots of modalities and many of my guests practice many of them, but Lexus's expertise puts her in a special class of wellness practitioners. As an international best-selling author, a wellness TV host, double board certified holistic health practitioner, nutritional consultant, and business consultant, Lexis Johnson shows you the way to multiple streams of income for your wellness practice. Lexis, I feel super excited to welcome you to our show. Well, I'm honored to be here, Allie. It's it's my pleasure, absolute pleasure. You just, I have the coolest guests here and you're like another one of these extraordinary people. So I, I know that you raised seven children and you said that you started uh, um, working outside the home while some of them were teenagers. Could you tell us how you were able to make that work? Because man, when I tried that and I still had a child at home, my family was furious with me. Well, maybe it's just a sign of the times and the changes that we're going through. I don't know, but I did stay home for the, the first little while with all of my children. And I did have seven. They were very close in age. And the last three, I immigrated to marry an American. He's my second husband. And I took three teenagers with me. Two of them played hockey. And uh, then there was also my daughter who was involved in different activities. So the two that played hockey, my new husband would meet them or come and pick them up and take them to their hockey games, or they were old enough to drive and could get there on their own. And then I would just have to worry about my daughter. But having immigrated from Canada to the US, I didn't know who, they're, who they were playing around with, who their friends were. I didn't know the parents of the kids they were hanging out with, and I didn't know the hangout places. So it wasn't very long before I didn't want to work outside the home in a different location. I wanted to work from the home and be in control of my own life. So I made it my business to find out what I had to do to get online. And I did. I love that motivation. I never thought of that before. So you could keep track of everything you just mentioned, but you figured out, and not just anybody can figure out how to do a viable business, especially 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. how, how did you find everything you needed 20 years ago to make that happen? 
Well, I made every mistake under the sun. So what I do today is because of what I did back then. Um, but I grew up in a family business, so I was very lucky. I got to uh, understand how to sell accounts payable, accounts receivable, like basically everything there was to know about a family business, but they came in the door. So when you work online, there's no door, right? It's they there's no location for them to go to it's a www place and if they take a look and they don't like it they're gone forever mm -hmm. and that doesn't usually happen with a bricks and mortar place because people know what they want and they research before they ever go shopping so when it's online people are savvy today and they know what they want as well but they take one look and if your message isn't bright and beautiful and big right on the very first page at the very top where they can see it in a couple of seconds, you've lost them forever. So I had to learn what that was. And I was very fortunate to hire a, a fabulous coach. And I worked with his coaching team. And I, I did make some dipsy doodle kind of detours and new turns, but I figured it out. And I made a lot of money online my very first time out. And here I am. Wow, it's like, and I totally get what you're saying because I'll get well over 500 visitors a month to my page, but most of them stay for eight seconds. So I'm obviously not knowing what they're coming looking for yet. That's why I'm redesigning my site. So this might seem like a question, but how do you spend your free time? And I mean, after reading your bio, what free time might be? <laughs> I don't have a lot of free time, but I do like to do an awful lot of different things. I crochet, I go for walks by the river. We have a spirit trail and I do go for walks and I don't have a dog right now, but I love English bulldogs and I've had five of them. So that has occupied my time during the time I built this business. But English bulldogs like to sleep a lot. So they're very good for internet marketers because I can sit at my desk and they can stay down by my feet and cuddle and let me know when they have to go out to the bathroom and we'll go out for a quick 10 or 20 minute walk and I get fresh air, they get fresh air. And then they're like, I'm done, mom, let's go back in. And then they come back in and sleep. <laughs> so that's a perfect dog for an internet marketer. It's really, that's a really neat. And um, you mentioned earlier when we were talking that, did you say there's a river outside you can see? Yeah, I'm not far from the ocean and the river drains into the ocean. Oh, so wow. it's brackish river, it's brackish water, brackish meaning it's kind of salty and it's kind of clear. And it's because the ocean has the waves and it flows back up the river. And so the river actually has tides just like the ocean does because it flows that direction. So you can actually see the boats that are docked beside where, I, where I'm living how they are positioned in the water and then when the tide goes out they're sitting on the river bottom and then the tide comes back in and up they go and now you're, they're bouncing around with the waves again uh, and that's just right by the shore where it's shallow it, it, it does get a lot deeper of course it is a big river it's the Fraser River here in Vancouver BC. That's fine I, I have a good friend in New Zealand and I spent three months with her many years ago. And I remember we toured so many places, riding by where the tide was out, just what you described it. That was such a weird thing to me because I'd never seen anything like that. So the boats look like they're sitting on the, on the ground. Yeah, and they are. And it's really crazy. I have a friend that has a houseboat and he has two boats. He lives on the houseboat and he uses his smaller boat to teach of all things water skiing. Now this river is a river where they cut the logs and they bring the logs back and forth. Wow. And so logs escape. They don't stay in the little you know, grouping that they're in. So sometimes they escape. So it's really interesting how he goes flying down the river teaching people how to water ski and he's dodging logs. <laughs> And I've gone with him as a spotter. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's really exciting 
Is that fun? Is, does it get scary when you're spotting? Not that many logs, so it's not scary. It's not scary at all, but it's so exhilarating when it's a hot, sunny day in the summer and you're out in the water, you're just relaxing and enjoying, and then the boat picks up speed and you got a nice little breeze going, and then somebody you know, is water skiing and they fall, so you have to turn around and go and get them back into the boat, and so you stop, and now you get all hot again, and then they get back up and they start water skiing, and now you got the breeze and the, the water spraying up at you and you get cooled off again so it's a pretty cool way to enjoy the summer so I do get to go out and enjoy myself <laughs> yeah before, I love the water that's where I live right now there's just a pond but in this part of New York State everywhere you go there are rivers there are creeks and well the Hudson River is a major river I'm only a mile from there mm. so and also mountains I was in British Columbia when I was 16, so it was a very long time ago, oh, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was such a beautiful place. It's very beautiful here, but it rains a lot. So it's beautiful because we're in a rainforest. And yeah. this is one of the only places in the world where you can both snow ski and water ski in the same day because we have Whistler and Cypress and, and, and Grouse Mountain. We have you know major mountains, Mount Seymour, right here within an hour of the city. Actually, Grouse Mountain's right in North Vancouver. You just go up the mountain a little ways and you're there. And, you know, the, um, the major skiing resorts are just, you know, a couple hours up the Sea to Sky Highway. And, at, you know, if you can go in the morning and go snow skiing, you can literally come back in the afternoon and go water skiing. It's not that far away, really. That's so cool. Uh, a beautiful uh, place to go being in the Cascade Mountains in Oregon during the summer and going mountain, call it mountain climbing, but it was mountain hiking. And so it was summertime and it was warm and we're walking along and it's snow covered. Mm. But yeah, that, that sounds like it uh, might be a similar environment. That's Pacific Northwest. Yeah, that, definitely. Northwest. You're going to get snow in the winter. Well, we do too. We've been getting snow here too. And we don't generally get snow in the winter, but the last couple of years, we've had snow that stays. It doesn't just fall and disappear like it used to. It wow. just falls and stays. So we had a white Christmas this year and it was pretty cold. Wow. Yeah, but weather patterns are changing everywhere. So quite dramatically. Yeah, I have some acquaintances who live in the Rocky Mountains. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days ago, they had a fresh snowfall, a foot of snow. Oh, my. So, yeah, I'm just so grateful that we finally have springtime. <laughs> we still have a lot of rain, but at least it's not snow. <laughs> we well, went we more rain than snow, that's for sure. And it's just constant. It's like ever present daily, daily, every day during the winter. So the snow was a bit of a respite, but once it comes and the kids build their snowman, then it becomes a chore to have to dig out the snow. And the, we have lots of snow plows. Like seriously, we only use them one or two days out of the year, but we bring in all these snow plows and it's crazy. People don't go to work and it's just because they don't have the winter tires and it's kind of nuts. But then it rains and rains and rains. And here it is May and it's a rainy, crazy day. We had two days in a row with t-shirts and shorts and now here i am in a turtleneck because today it's cold yeah so you can't pack your winter things away here you have to really wait until you're in you know put, bringing up the suntan lotion every day before you can put your winter coat away yeah it's just it's not the way it, i grew up in new york and the weather is definitely not what it used to be yeah it's changing everywhere so i'm gonna take um, a quick sponsor break. My story of finding true happiness. I was lying in bed after brain surgery. I couldn't move very much. I couldn't swallow. I was choking even on my own saliva. And I couldn't talk. <laughs> I couldn't walk. And I was lying there. I was feeling elated like hi like i just finished a workout and i said universe how can i feel like this when my body's in this state and the answer was this is true happiness and the universe also told me i want you to treat to teach people what true happiness is because it's our default state 
And if you're not living in true happiness, it's because you have blocks in the way. So right now, I'm creating a pilot study for a new modality that the universe delivered to me to get you to a place of true happiness because you don't do it by focusing on what's wrong or what's missing. It's focusing on wellness. So the link for that and also these special prices while the pilot studies on and space is limited, links for contacting me to get more information on that will be in the show notes. And now I want to get back because there's so much I could be like here all day asking you about all these fascinating things that you do and you know. Could you please tell us about the alchemical process and how did it come to you? That are you, Do you download stuff like I do or yeah, definitely. Um, and after the, your little commercial break, I want to interview you on your program. I mean, that sounds fascinating, too. But the alchemical process, I've been all my life. My mother was very psychic. My grandfather and my father's side was as well. So I get it naturally from both sides. I was always able to see auras. I was born with a hearing problem. So I kind of lived in this imaginary world. I was extremely shy. And there are no pictures of me when I was little because I was hiding behind my mother all the time. All the pictures were me hiding until I was a little bit older. And then, you know, I was more active. So I got caught in a picture, but I didn't really pose for them. I was extremely shy and I thought I was an introvert. Now I'm not quite sure what I am, <laughs> but I started reading a lot of books, just reading, 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 mostly fantasies and imaginary things. And so when these things happened to me, and when I was reading all these books, that was the world to me. I didn't know any better because I couldn't hear what the real world was. And although I could see things, I, my mother made me feel like that wasn't the way things were. You know, she wanted me to be happy. And so I grew up with mom that was humming and singing all the time and a father that was whistling and happy go lucky. So I grew up happy. I had a great childhood. I didn't know any better. And one day when I realized I didn't have the perfect family, I was an adult already. I was about to get married when I realized, you know, people don't treat each other like that in other families and people don't do this and they don't do that. And I was like, wow, I had no idea. I was so disillusioned. But nevertheless, I started very, very young. Uh, I was a teenager when I was learning about astrology and I, I've never stopped. It was my absolute favorite thing. And from astrology, I got into reading auras and like all these other things, numerology and tarot reading. And I just sprung off from there. And eventually when I was living in California, cause I'm a Canadian, I was born in Canada. When I was living in California, I was teaching at the Learning Light Foundation in LA about these metaphysical subjects, but I never saw them as a job. I saw them as a hobby because they're not a real job, right? And now, gosh, they are such a real job. The world is waking up and I'm so blessed and grateful to have all these modalities and trainings under my belt. And the real job that I had has created a foundation for me to uh, allow me to dabble in all these other modalities and be able to play around until I could figure out what the world needs. And now of all the time in the world, it's the time the world is waking up and I am needed and you're needed. And there's so many of us that are light workers and light bringers that have these healing modalities. And what we do is we just uncover and provide a space for your body to heal itself. Our natural state is joy and love. Absolutely. And it's my brother is a retired doctor and he's always wanting me to do a procedure yeah. or a, a medication and I, I went through something where I was worried about not having a doctor which is unusual for me and she just she was very open-minded so she would ask would you like to get a prescription for this would you like to get that test and I just said no to all of them but People are so stuck wanting somebody to heal them. I remember in my mom's generation, if you ask somebody how they felt, they say, I don't know, I'm going to the doctor next week. Like they couldn't even figure out what was going on inside them. 
I don't even know how they feel. That's sad. Well, I kind of have an explanation for this. I feel indulge me for a second. Sure. What my belief is, my core training, like legitimate in a school training and certification is nutritional consulting. And when I took that training, it's because I had so many problems with my health and these nutritional things. When you're in a 3D world and you grow up being told that you're a 3D person and you're, you're a body and you have all these illnesses, the only way to fix those illnesses is in the 3D world. But in reality, the problems aren't 3D, they're in the fifth dimension, they're in your soul and your spirit and your mind is limiting you. But I didn't know that at the time. So I studied nutrition. And my core belief of that is pleomorphism, which basically means the adaptation of the body to your environment. But you can't adapt quickly to all these chemicals that, that came about since the last world war. The industrial revolution has so created such chemicals that of such power that our bodies can't adapt that quickly. We need thousands of years to be able to adapt. So we're a sick society. There are thousands of different kinds of cancer, just cancer, never mind all the other illnesses. Whereas in our great grandfather's era, there was cancer seldom. Like right. it was around, but not like it wasn't, there weren't thousands of different kinds. And pleomorphism, before pleomorphism was the way things were. And when Salk invented the, or discovered the vaccine for polio, that's when things changed because suddenly the world could see a business around the vaccine. And what have we got today? We certainly got a business and big pharma making money off vaccines. But this all started way, way, way back, you know, centuries ago with the Salk vaccine and the, and the polio vaccine. And that's when things changed because I don't see th that it was all a problem because people didn't used to wash their hands. And there's this whole big story about how women were dying in childbirth because doctors weren't washing their hands from one woman to the next. And they, the women were dying. And that all stopped when people realized you needed to wash your hands, that there was such a thing as a germ. So Salk did a good thing, but it's kind of, you know, been a, like a snowball rolling downhill, getting bigger and bigger. And instead of just being what it originally was, an addition, it's completely changed the way the medical profession is. And we went from natural remedies to suddenly nobody can heal their body naturally you have to listen to an educated person who tells you about medications and surgeries and i just stand for everybody having a choice that there are so many if you stop and think about it there's there's so i was going to say so many natural remedies that can work that would should be tried first and of course if you're in an emergency situation go to the hospital if you break a bone you're in a, in a you know a traumatic situation go to the doctor you know, I'm not suggesting there's no place for them, but I am saying that there are a lot of natural and alternative remedies out there that have been forgotten along the way. Everything that is a drug comes from a plant or animal source, and they've made it into a drug. But there are natural remedies that these came from that don't have all those side effects. And that's that's my big platform. And that's... I won't go to somebody who works in any way other than energetically. I just don't believe in all those things. And I had, even when I had uh, some years after surgery, I developed a blood clot in my lungs. So I couldn't breathe without morphine. And after five days, I said to the doctor, I'm not doing this anymore. And he said he never took anybody off that medication after just five days, but he took me off it. And I healed faster than they'd ever seen anybody heal from that. Because it's, I believe it's how you run your head and with all the modalities that you know that you can do, that you can teach. Mm -hmm. It's, and that's what, who I track to myself. So it's a matter of, Whatever you are looking for out in the world, that's who you're going to attract to yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Well, when you think about the law of attraction nowadays, like here in 2022, we've got uh, quantum physics and quantum mechanics that have proven that things that we used to do 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 years ago are the way things are. And back in those days, it was like magic. When someone could heal somebody or make something, you know, happen or disappear or, you know, do something that was unable to be comprehended by the brain um, system at the time, it was magic or voodoo or black magic or, you know, but nowadays people still have that mentality that it's not so but it is so. And now quantum mechanics and quantum physics is proving that all of those types of things are the truth, that there is validity to all of them. So what's, what is the big pharma going to do? What is the allopathic medical system going to do? Of course, they're going to rebel back and tell us, no, no, this is the only way you got to listen to us. We're making money. We can't lose money. So of course, they're going to rebel back. But I'm not saying that they shouldn't have a place. They do need a place. But so do we. You know, we need this, these natural remedies here as well. Well, we should have a choice. I just think that the world should have a choice. If you want to go to a doctor and take a magic pill, yeah, you're going to get probably better faster with your magic pill, but you're going to have to risk side effects and possible surgeries and et cetera, et cetera, down the road. And some of these pills are masking your symptoms. They're not really healing you know, there's only one that can heal. And that's a great energy source greater than we are. And it, we have to have the belief that we can heal. And that works with natural remedies as well as with allopathic remedies. But if you take the natural remedies, it may take longer for them to work because they're more subtle, but they don't have nearly the, the ramifications and the side effects. In fact, most of them don't have any negative side effects. Some of those side effects are that you get happy that you're elated, that you, your, your happiness hormones are elevated. So how is that a bad thing? It isn't. And uh, people, well, doctors used to live by the Hippocratic Oath. You know, yeah. let food be thy medicine and thy medicine be the food. And I think that got lost somewhere along the way. It totally got lost. It totally got lost. In fact, the TV show and magazine and platform that I'm promoting right now I have that exact, not that quote, but the other quote, the Hippocratic Oath is primum non nocere, which is Latin, which means first, do no harm. And I'm like, if you cut me open or give me chemicals that need, you know, have side effects and need other drugs to make you better, how is that first not doing any harm? I think first you should do the natural remedies, you know, and it was if you go back in time, some of these major quotes that even medical doctors are using come from Pythagoras, who believed in the natural order of things. And here we are with all these chemicals. Yeah, if you go back to the ancient Greeks and the earliest volumes that were recorded, it all makes sense and pertains today. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole discovery of, hey, these truths aren't woo-woo and they're not new age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, the things that we're calling new age are really ancient. They're not new age. What's new age is the internet, right? We didn't have that before. And gosh only knows what we did have because some of this has been lost. And if you look in cave dwellings, there's people, there's Egyptian uh, paintings and uh, cave dwelling type uh, hieroglyphics and things that have cone shapes with men or you know symbols of people's carrying these cones and you can see the vibration coming off of them and then you wonder I look at construction there's so much construction going on in Vancouver and I look at the construction and I and I'm like gosh when I was a little girl this is how you used to do it and 50 years have gone by and you're still doing it this way and I think about the Egyptians and how did they build the pyramids and all those wonderful big buildings with these granite rocks, huge that came from so far away. And we haven't figured out how they do it. And yet, if we just read the hieroglyphics that are on the buildings that we're trying to figure out how we're built, and they show you the cones, we have now in this century proven that sound can lift, it can levitate. Why are we not pursuing that? Because there's no money in it. 
Yeah, I, I remember reading about a sculptor. I don't remember what state he was in, but he'd have these enormous rock boulders delivered by a truck, and then he'd levitate them into his property and move them around. And I watch a lot of documentaries and a lot of archaeology. And, and the things that they believe and they talk, it's all energy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we're energetic beings. If you think about it, we don't even really exist. Like, yeah. This is just an outfit of clothing, this body. It's just an outfit of clothing. And in reality, you and I are both exactly the same. We're just fingers of the same energy source. Yeah, that, that's one point. I, I did a talk recently on beliefs and the fact if you're wishing something bad on another person, you want to pay attention to the fact that like you just said, we're all the same energy. So whatever you're wishing to somebody else could happen to you too. Exactly. You're wishing it upon yourself. So you have to wish good for everybody. And, and I, there are more and more people doing that today. So it, we're getting there. It's not happening. It's, it sounds like it's happening faster in Canada than the U.S. though. No, I think you're just meeting some great Canadians. I think it's happening <laughs> all over. You have a bigger population than we have here in Canada. So there's probably people hiding all over the place that get this, that understand it. You just haven't met the right you know, group of people. But I, I don't know. I think in your field, you probably know a lot more people than you realize. I mean, look at Sedona and Sonoma County and places near San Francisco. I mean, just those couple of places by themselves. There's tons of people there that believe it like we do. And look at your audience. Your whole audience believes like we do or they wouldn't be tuned in. Yeah, I, I remember I was in Sedona. I don't remember how many years ago. And there was someone, he was a spiritual teacher who lived there. And he gave my friend and me a tour of the Red Rocks. And we went up on one of the mountains. And as we walked by a crevice, I heard all these chants. And it was Native American spirits chanting that I heard going on there. And then if you look down in the valley, and you really looked from your heart, you could see all the spirits down in there. So you could, because you have that ability. And some people do not have it because they don't believe they can have it. In order to have the ability, you have to believe you can have it. And, and people say to me, oh, I don't have that talent. Everybody's got it. We were born with it. Little baby children talk about past lives all the time. And they grow up and their friends laugh at them or parents tell them, oh, that doesn't exist or that's your imaginary friend. And so we grow out of it. But it's not, we haven't grown out of it. We've closed our minds to it. We can't see it. It's like when, when Columbus landed on Miquelon Island in Nova Scotia in Canada and the, the native chiefs could see that something was happening. The ripples in the water on the on the shore were different and they knew something was out there and they looked for days and days and days and couldn't figure out what was there and the people on the boats all the the crew on the boats could see the natives and they were deciding well hey you know we want to go on ashore we're not sure of these red people because they have red skinned people we don't know if they're friendly or if they're not friendly and they could hear them whooping and hollering and celebrating at night in front of the fire and they're like oh, i don't know if it's safe to go so they were taking their time about coming on and that gave the natives an opportunity to get adjusted to it and one day as the chief is every day standing there and it's his job to know what's going on suddenly he could see the boats suddenly he stayed open and he could then see them they hadn't moved they hadn't suddenly materialized it was that he couldn't see them and now he could and that's exactly the way we are today we have all this energy that's around us and we can't see it but if you think about it the energy that is in the hydroelectric wires that string from the telephone poles the only reason we have a wire is to show us where the energy flows hydroelectric energy just flows and the wire is there to show us where it's safe and where it isn't that's the only reason there's a wire wow i never heard that before it really makes sense but they don't want you to know <laughs> Oh, it, it's making me think I once went up in a hot air balloon in Boise, Idaho, and 
all of a sudden the pilot said, did you notice we just dramatically dropped by a thousand feet? And none of us did because we were going over the wires. So we were passing through the energy you were just describing. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting. I, I never thought, I, I didn't know that until you just said it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of energy in the world that we don't even know about with, because of the internet and because we have an adventurous spirit, people are discovering and understanding these things and then posting it online. And there are an awful lot of discoveries that we didn't have before, just like the Mariana Trench. When I was a little girl, nobody ever heard of it. And now we find that it's the deepest place in the ocean. And there's fish down there that we've never seen ever anywhere before. And because of new technology, we're able to get machinery down there and have a look at what's there, even in the blackness. And there are fish down there that have adapted with fluorescence. They're able to create their own light source. And those are the, some of the fish are depicted in the movie, like Little Nemo, where you see the fish with these dangling, like this little light in front of his head. That's where that came from is the Mariana Trench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, this is, you wonder what I do in my spare time. Don't even ask me because I watch all these crazy things on the internet. <laughs> oh, well, oh, I do too. I, I think we have a lot in common. Like, do, girl. Uh, the tube, um, I don't know what they call them, it, better in the darkness and they don't have eyes and they live down in those deep darkness. And yeah. like... But they can see because there's fluorescence. The fish give off a photon that has, like it emits a light. It's like a little fluorescent light just like fluorescent light bulbs, exactly the same thing. And they call it fluorescence. And different fish have different colors, but it's all for the same basic reason. So you can see them. And so they can see while they're underwater. Wow, well, I'm enjoying talking with you. And I know you have some other places to be. So what do people generally come to you seeking? When somebody's looking for you, is there something that they're looking for help with? I have I have some major things that people actually are attracted to me about um, for business. I've been doing astrology for five decades. So for a really long time, I started as a teenager. So there's four basic things that they come looking for. And they always ask, where's the money? Like, where do I find the money? How do I get rich or, or how do I support myself? Or, you know, like what's, what's going on? Where can I make the most money and my career or schooling? If they're really young, what is it that I can be doing? What am I, what's my soul telling me I'm supposed to do? What would be easier to do career wise? Why am I struggling? Well, you're probably struggling because you're doing what your parents want you to do instead of what you wanted to do. Go back to doing what you want to do, which is probably what's in your astrology. And then um, people always want to know, how do I meet Prince Charming? Like, where is this guy? Where, when am I going to meet him or miss, you know, the princess? Where am I going to meet her? Or how do I get the guy off the couch to help me with the kids? Basically, now I've got Prince Charming. He's not much of a prince. How do I fix that? Right. And then the last one that most astrologers don't get that I do because I have I am allowed to talk about health and wellness is I have this thing going on in my body. It's not working properly. How do I heal? So those are the four major questions. And so I wanted to learn because I had a lot of, you know, health problems when I was growing up, I was really sensitive to a lot of foods and didn't realize that's what the problem was. So I ended up at one point I was pregnant. Uh, I had uh, fibromyalgia, I had an embolism, I had pleurisy, I had blood clot in my lung and uh, an ulcer all going on at the same time. I really let myself go, but I'm a tough nut. I had babies to look after and a husband to take care of and a household to run. And I wasn't going to give up for anything, but my body said otherwise. And I collapsed one day. They took me to the hospital and the doctor said, well, you're too far pregnant for us to give you the tests and we can't give you the medications because it would damage the baby. So we'd either cause an abortion or a premature birth wouldn't be good or the, the chemicals we'd give you would damage the baby. So we can't do anything for you. So while I'm laying in the hospital on painkillers, and that can't be good for the baby, a show came on the TV and it was about a doctor who was talking about food sensitivities and he'd written a book. And I went, oh, those are all my favorite foods. My uh -huh. husband was going out of town that weekend. I went home and I threw everything out of the pantry and the fridge that that doctor had said was a possible problem. And my three-year-old started to be not hyper anymore. And my one and a half year old started to be a model child. And the baby inside me that they said wasn't growing. Now, a month later, 
was growing just fine. And I delivered an eight and a half pound baby. I got better. The babies got better. Everybody was happy except the husband. He didn't like that. I threw his favorite foods out. That's it. Uh, my favorite food used to be sesame seeds and tahini. And boy, my body doesn't like me eating it. So it's like, man, I really miss that. <laughs> but I'm not stupid. So I can eat that there. That's interesting. Usually that's a healthy food. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you would think. So I've been off it for so many years. I can test and see if it's still that good for me. I know that you have some amazing gifts for our listeners. Would you please share them? Because you'll do a better job explaining them. Yeah, there's four gifts there for you. Two of them are about how to write a book. One is about, are you ready to write a book? And if you open it up and answer the questions, there's pictures in there that show you different kinds of books that I've written. I'm a two times international bestselling author. And I have about 50 books that I've written that I didn't even try to make bestsellers because I sell them with my programs. And if you go in and look at that document, you're going to see these are workbooks and these are journals and these are what magazines and they're all different kinds of books. So you can see what what they look like and it talks about them and then towards the end there's a readiness assessment so you can fill out the questionnaire and get real clarity on what it is you want a book for what you want to do with it and are you ready to write a book and the other one is the chapter on a program that i've got it's first chapter in a book called how to write it once and have it market you forever and it's for online marketers to determine how to write a book how to create your course and how to write a year's worth of social media all in one sitting. So basically over a long weekend, or I can, and I do teach it and I have a program coming up um, this well soon <laughs> about how to write it once and have it market you forever, where we do it over 12 weeks and we get together once a week for 12 weeks. And in any case, I stair step you up the whole program so that you don't miss any spots. I don't want any holes and leaks in your in your business. And the other two are how to manifest. At the new moon is the best time astrologically to create 10 wishes that you want. So one of the little uh, downloadables I have is how to quickly figure out what you're going to manifest and how to do it. And the and who tells you how nobody tells you how these days. So I wanted to give you the how of stuff. And the other one is how to it's an invocation. And you you can use them both together, you just take the 10 wishes that you want to put uh, if you manifest at the new moon by the full moon, you should start to see some of your manifestations coming true. And this is an invocation. So it helps you really believe that you're going to get what you're, you're attempting to manifest. So there's, there's the four gifts for you. That's an extraordinary generosity. And man, I'm going to be getting all of them myself, even though I've done a lot of that stuff. Cause it's fun. Well, yeah, you, you just know things and have different perspectives than I do. What's the best way for people to find you online or going through those, the gifts or is there a particular website you like to send them to? Well, if they download the gifts in the back of the books, there's always my contact information and my email address is my name, Lexis Johnson at me.com so you can always send me an email and ask me questions and i have a variety of programs coming up but i'm also promoting a tv show that's going to, going to be on roku amazon fire uh e360 live android and apple and apple tv and it's called vibe it up and there's three of them, but one of them is Vibe It Up, Multiple Streams of Income for Wellness Practitioners, and it's to teach you how to build your business. And the other two are uh, Vibe It Up, Primum Non Noceri. So the Latin words, if you don't understand them, that's you're in the right place, because those are for teaching you all the latest modalities of wellness and light workers or light bringers modality practitioners so that there you have choices i just want you guys out there in the world to have choices when things go wrong in your life health health wise whether it's mindset whether it's spiritual health or whether it's physical health you have choices so th those are ways you can get in touch with me uh, i'm so grateful that i met you and that you shared so much with us today and like i said I could keep talking to you and I definitely want to know uh, about your programs when you're releasing them. So at least I can share them on my blog. Absolutely. Thank so, you. 
thank you thank you thank you so much for being you and for joining me here because i know you have one full schedule hi i'm a pretty busy lady i'm interviewing for speakers for my tv show as we speak so that's usually what i'm doing right now but it's been my honor to be here and i've had so much fun talking to you too and when you talk to your audience about when you're going to be on my show that's how people can get in touch with me because they can just follow you Okay, that sounds great. So I want to thank all of you for joining us here today. And I trust that you had some awakening moments, perhaps some things you never heard of or thought about before. Uh, in, in the show notes, you'll see the links. Please contact me to see if you're eligible for the pilot program to discover true happiness in your life, because I'll tell you it changes everything. Remember to pick up your uh, special offer, the Step in a New Direction, and also join in our Facebook group where you'll get more information and make some new friends and see what else is going on that we might not have put enough emphasis on here today. Listen to or watch any episode of the show on our website and Again, please leave a review so that others can find us. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing happens outside of you. Everything you see, it's happening in your body. Everything you hear, taste, touch, smell, it's all happening in your body. It's only your awareness which is who you really are, that can experience all those things. And I will see you here next time.